Hi everyone, I'm Lali Devdas, and today I'll be talking about succinct LW sampling, random polynomials, and obfuscation. This is joint work with my advisor, Vinod Vaikunjanathan at MIT, Willie Kwok at Northeastern, Daniel Wicks at Northeastern at NTT, and also Hutek Hui at NTT. Let's start by talking about indistinguishability obfuscation. We generally think of an indistinguishable obfuscation scheme as some randomized compiler that takes a circuit C and computes some obfuscation of that circuit. There's two properties that we want from this uh, scheme. First being correctness. We want that the obfuscated circuit will compute the same function as C, basically so that we can use it uh, in the same way that we would use the circuit C, just without leaking any information, which is the second property. We want security, which means that the obfuscated circuit should hide everything about the implementation of the function. This means that if we have two functionally equivalent circuits, C1 and C2, which basically means that they have the same truth table, then we should have that the obfuscation of C1 is computationally indistinguishable from the obfuscation of C2. IO, especially in recent years, has been shown to imply most main cryptographic primitives that we uh, are trying to build today, uh, which means that it's become even more and more important for us to try to construct IO uh, with a security proof. Uh, as we'll see in a second, most of the current uh, state-of-the-art IO either relies on assumptions uh, such as bilinear maps, uh, which are not known to be post-quantum secure, um, or on very complicated, interactive, uh, non-falsifiable assumptions, which we'll see in a second. But first, to talk about some current construction, state-of-the-art I.O. schemes, um, a recent one by JLS um, used uh, the external dippy hellman assumption, LPN over finite fields, Goldreich, and LWE, and then later managed to remove LWE using only the first three assumptions. Um, again, we're unhappy with these just because they're not post-quantum secure. Uh, we are going to try to base uh, IO solely on LWE-like assumptions, uh, which are believed to be post-quantum secure. What is LWE? <laughs> the LWE assumption, parametrized by some parameters n, q, and chi, uh, basically states that these two distributions, um, so matrix A or uh, uh, some matrix A multiplied by a secret S plus a, an error vector E, uh, is indistinguishable from the matrix A and a tr uh, truly uniform vector. Here we have that A, S, A and S and U are all drawn uniformly from their distributions and E is drawn from chi. Uh, we also have that uh, just in terms of the parameters, we usually think about M and N as being poly and lambda, Q as being two to the poly and lambda, and chi is B bounded um, with B small enough uh, that you know it's basically a very, very small uh, uh, error that we're seeing uh, in terms of Q being the whole modulus. We do believe this to be post-quantum secure. Um, so if we manage to build IO from LWE, then we will have plausibly post-quantum secure uh, IO. What are the current constructions that I mentioned that are based on LWE-ish assumptions? So we have some based on GGH15 encodings. Uh, the problem with these is just that we don't have a proof of security. On the other hand, we have this other line of work, very recent. Um, including work by Romain Gay and Raphael Pass, and then uh, a work from last year by Otek and Daniel. Um, here we do have security proofs, but we have these very complicated, um, sometimes interactive or non-falsifiable LWE-like assumptions that involve randomness leakage and other things that aren't well studied. Uh, we would really like to base IO on an LWE-like assumption that is well studied and falsifiable and non-interactive, uh, which is the main goal of this work. How are we gonna do this? So we will use succinct randomized encodings. Uh, what is a succinct randomized encoding? A succinct randomized encoding of some function which maps L bits to N bits uh, is an effic efficient probabilistic algorithm in code such that, here are the three properties you want. First of all, correctness. Uh, given the CRS, we're working in the CRS model here, uh, the function F and the encoding, we should be able to efficiently recover F of X. Security. Uh, so for any two inputs, uh, x0 and x1, such that f of x0 is equal to f of x1, we should have that their encodings are computationally indistinguishable. And lastly, succinctness. Uh, we need a pretty strong bound on succinctness here. We want that the encoding um, has bit length n to the 1 minus delta for some delta less than 1. Um, I'm ignoring here uh, factors that are polynomial in the security parameter or L, et cetera, um, since they're not that important. We already know that SRE, 
um, as defined before, uh, suffices for IO. Um, this is from work from a couple of years ago. I'm not going to get into it, but basically you can think about the input X as being the description of a circuit um, and F being the universal function. Um, so F is basically just going to compute the truth table of X. I you know, evaluate circuit X on, on all possible inputs. We'll now turn to actually constructing such uh, an SRE scheme. Okay, here's our first try based on some homomorphic commitment schemes, um, GSW and GVW, if you're familiar. So we'll have some commitment C. This commitment C will consist of a matrix A, a tall, skinny matrix A. Here we have that W much, much smaller than M. Uh, we're going to multiply by some randomness R, add an error E, and then finally, uh, our encoding of the input will be X tensor G, where G is the gadget matrix. We can perform homomorphic evaluation on this commitment to get C sub F. Uh, note that this homomorphic evaluation only, requ only requires knowledge um, of the function F and not of the input X. However, um, the two matrices that we see here are sub F of X and E sub F of X. Um, they do depend on X. Uh, and after doing this homomorphic evaluation, we can recover uh, F of X by simply subtracting uh, a times r sub f of, f of x uh, and then rounding because e sub f of x will still be small. However, revealing r sub f of x is semantically insecure. Uh, just to clarify, in this picture, what we see in orange are the things that are released um, publicly, um, and what we see in blue are the things that are either, you know, computed by uh, the, the person who's trying to evaluate the circuit um, or they're uh, uh, or they're, they're not given at all, and they're just kind of implicit in the construction. So this is basically the issue with our first try. Um, we have succinctness here. Um, we managed to get succinctness basically by the fact that C will be much smaller than C sub F. Um, however, uh, revealing R sub F X is not actually going to give us security. So what are we gonna do? Uh, again, committing to X using the home for commitment scheme, what if we now also generate some new LWE instance, B star, um, in terms of the same A as, as in our commitment? So we'll have B star is equal to A, S star plus E star. In this ideal world, this is basically just a straw man. We're thinking of S as being random and, and E as being Gaussian, like how we would really want an LWE sample to be. The SRE will be A, C, so this is the same as before. Um, B star, so that's new, we're adding that into the SRE now. And then R sub FX plus S star. So the point of this here is that we're going to basically mask any information that R sub FX might leak uh, by adding uh, the truly random S star. To decode, um, you start by homomorphically evaluating C to get C sub F, uh, then you add B star and subtract A times R sub FX plus S star. This basically works out to what you would expect and eventually you get that all of the terms except for the errors cancel, um, and then you can just round to recover f of x. However, this doesn't work either because this is not succinct. Uh, B star uh, has the same size as C sub f. Remember, the reason why we got succinctness in the first uh, the first try was because we weren't giving C sub f. C sub f, we're just giving C and then asking the evaluator to do homomorphic evaluation. Uh, in this case, because uh, B star is actually just as big as C f, it just gets added to it. Um, it has bit length n, and we no longer have succinctness. Our third try. <laughs> Uh, again, committing to X using a homomorphic commitment scheme. Now we're going to sample a short seed for B star. The SRE will be just replacing B star with the short seed. Um, and to decode, we're just going to expand the seed uh, to the full matrix B star and proceed as, de as decoding used to happen. This one, you know, this is, this is really what we want. This is the point of this work. Um, basically what we're gonna see is uh, this new notion of succinct LWE sampling. Uh, where we have some two functions, gen and expand. Gen will sample some short seed, seed, B, uh, seed sub B star, and expand taking the CRS and the seed can give us back uh, B star. We'll now define what we actually mean by succinct LWE sampler. So there's three properties we want. First being correctness. Um, we basically, so we'll often write it as B star is uh, equal to A star S star plus uh, E star. However, uh, just for to define correctness this way, basically what we want is that B star is approximately uh, A star S star. 
Security we'll get to in a second um, because it's very non-trivial. Uh, intuitively, we basically want, you know, to be as close to the ideal world as possible. Again, the ideal world being where S star is truly random and E star is Gaussian. Um, however, this is not really achievable. And so I'll talk in the next couple of minutes about what we actually do manage to achieve uh, in terms of security. Okay. The, the last property that we want is succinctness. Um, so succinctness states that the seed um, should have bit length n to the one minus uh, delta, uh, where again, n is the bit length of V star uh, for some delta less than one. Okay, let's uh, revisit the security notion now that we've covered correctness and succinctness, which are pretty simple to define. Uh, the question is what security guarantee do we really need um, in order to be able to upgrade this and use it to, to create a semantically secure SRE in the way that I just described. So first, um, we'll remember the definition from WW, um, which basically asked that even if you're given the seed, B star still looks indistinguishable from fresh LW samples. Here, by fresh LW samples, we mean like ideal ones with uh, truly random S and, and Gaussian E. Unfortunately, uh, this definition requires a simulator. Um, it depends on the, the, the circuit implementation, by which you mean basically you're homomorphically um, evaluating and the way that that evaluation is implemented um, actually affects the security of the scheme. Uh, there was a paper uh, last year also showing that for a specific circuit implementation, this is actually broken. Um, there's other circuit implementations that for the, which this is not broken, but the point being this, this assumption is too complicated and we want something much simpler and easier to work with. Really, all we need from E star is that we want E star to mask E sub fx. If you recall, this is kind of the, the, the error term that gets left added on to our uh, what we eventually are going to decode. Um, and so what we want is that E star is going to mask this E sub fx, which is dependent on x, and therefore something that we don't want to leak. OK, so let's take another stab at defining what exactly we mean by security. Basically, what we want is that E star is a good flooding distribution. Um, and then it's able to flood uh, E sub fx in the way that I said before. How could we quantify this? We could say that for all uh, f, x0 and x1, such that f of x0 is equal to f of x1, so basically taking the same approach for security as um, in the, the security definition for SRE, um, we can state that we want, uh, given the seed um, and some encryption of, of, of the two inputs, that we basically have uh, the property that E star is going to flood the error. Um, this error is, is, is what we think of as the error that's uh, created by homomorphically evaluating F on the encryption of, of X. Unfortunately, we're still not happy with this. Um, this quantifies over all F. It's not falsifiable. It's hard to work with. Uh, we really want something that's going to be uh, a much, uh, much easier to analyze. Um, but we do, we want that notion to imply this one, right? Because this is pretty much the weakest security notion that we feel comfortable with, but we, we want to make sure that we're going to get this, um, but we don't want to have to necessarily analyze it. Um, so what can we do? Uh, this is basically the main uh, punchline of our paper. We, we show that it suffices to protect a single AND operation, which means that uh, all we need to show is that given seed uh, for B star, if you have an encryption of zero and one and encryption of zero and zero, and then you homomorphically uh, evaluate AND on these ciphertexts, um, that the, the resulting uh, error can be flooded by E star. We use a hybrid argument and a flag trick that's implicit in, in WW, but not really abstracted out um, or specified well. Um, and this gives us uh, what we want, which is strong security. I'll very briefly outline the construction just in a small case. Uh, the entries of E star end up being uh, low degree uh, multilinear polynomials in the entries of the original uh, E's, which I'll show in a second. Um, this is where the, the part of the title of our paper random polynomials comes in. Um, so for D equals two, we basically have that the, the seed uh, for B star will be two LWE samples for A1 and A2. Uh, we'll compute B star by taking the tensor of these, of these two samples. Um, using the mixed product property, we can simplify this um, until we get something that looks kind of like uh, what we want an LWE sample to look like. This strange thing with, with A's and I's is going to become our A star. Um, this term that depends on S, B, and E will become our S star. And then E1 and tensor E2 will become our E star. This is why the entries of E star are uh, low degree polynomials. 
Um, it's worth noting we actually are multiplying, like B star is actually going to be P times B1 tensor B2 times P prime. These are large matrices that we keep uh, in, this, in the CRS. Um, without getting into too much detail, we're also going to re-randomize A star and S star um, using Killian randomization um, just to ensure that they don't leak anything more than the product. This allows us to focus solely on E star. Um, in the paper, we also do some cryptanalysis uh, showing that uh, some attacks like such as uh, linearization, sum of squares, uh, covariance attacks um, won't work on E star. Um, and there's also been some recent work showing that we cannot actually hope for E star to look uh, pseudo IID on its own. However, uh, again, we don't need that. All we need is for E star to flood uh, the, the, the error from one and operation. Um, so we still have confidence in our scheme. Uh, and I think that's my time. So thank you.